The sacrifice you make right now is going to heal for tomorrow. Do you know what it means to go under general anesthesia? You might not get up. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is your girl IJ. If this is your first time being here, you're welcome to this video. So, if you're an OG, thank you so much for stopping by for this video. And if you're about to take the NCLEX exam, thank you so much for stopping by. I wish you all the best of luck that you can imagine. I wish you all the best. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some of the mistakes I made just so that you don't have to make those mistakes. Just so that you don't have to get to a point where you almost got frustrated like me or that you feel maybe frustrated. So um, for those of you guys who don't know, I have made a couple of videos about NCLEX because I had, I've had my fair share of, you know, the struggle when it comes to NCLEX. And I just want to t tell you something that you feel NCLEX is not because you don't know. And it's not because you're stupid, it's not because you're not intelligent. This is a very important video because many times we see many videos out there but people don't tell you what mistakes they actually made. And um, I think this video is going to help you in so many different ways. If you haven't subscribed to my channel before we continue this video, why don't you go ahead and subscribe? It is free of charge. You don't have to spend any money. All you need to do is just to click on that subscription button. And while you are at it, please do not forget to turn on the bell button just so that when I upload another video, you'll be notified. So thank you so much for your help. While creating videos about NCLEX, I learned a lot from you guys i met i encountered so many people and their stories touched me so much and that's why i decided to keep to keep on doing nclex videos because i know there's so many people who went who are going through the same thing that the same um things that i went through and some people who are still not finding a way to get out of it so I remember um, some of the videos that I did create, people left many comments and I even went to the point of talking to some of them on the phone and I could really understand where they were coming from because I was there before. So the first mistake that I made, I thought I knew the, the content. I thought I knew everything about the books, but honestly, I didn't. And I'm very sure most of you guys can attest to that because there are many times that maybe they can ask you about a disease condition like maybe hypoglycemia. Out of the like out of the top of your head, you already know what you you know you know what hypoglycemia is all about. But in truth and in fact, when you start to go deep into hypoglycemia, you realize that there are certain things that you don't know. And that was my problem. Because in NCLEX, knowing the content is very important for you to pass that exam. You cannot do tumbu tumbu in NCLEX if you pass the, the exam. You cannot do uh, maybe this answer, maybe that answer, and you pass that exam. You have to know the content, honestly, guys. And this is where I was lacking. I thought I knew the content, but really I didn't know the content. Because it, there's the big difference between you just knowing that, okay, hypoglycemia is, um, you know, a drop in blood sugar level and then when they ask you what are the signs and symptoms of somebody who is experienced or having hypoglycemia you don't know or maybe they ask you about the pathophysiology what really happens before the blood sugar actually drops to that level you don't know and that's where i was failing i'm just using hypoglycemia as an example now you may look at a disease condition and be like oh i know everything about um, hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism but if you go down into the pathophysiology you cannot even explain me the pathophysiology then you don't know then you don't know that particular disease condition and that was my problem I thought I knew it because hey I went to nursing school I did very well in school you know the exam I took in the Caribbean I did very well so I knew you know I knew it at the back of my hand but one thing we need to understand that Things change in nursing a lot. The things that we knew 2015 is different from 2020. And things change a lot. That's why they will tell you many times that you have to read your book. You have to know what the book says. The only reference you have is the nursing book. The only reference you have is the, is the nursing book. There is no other resource. They will not take your clinical practice as a reference. That's why you will hear many people say what you what you saw in the clinical area, just leave it right there. 
What you need to do is you read that NCLEX book and understand the content. And that, was where I was, that is where I was feeling. So if you're one of those who think maybe you don't know the material so much, then I will advise you to go ahead and read. Read, guys. Read. And if you haven't heard me say it before, the thing you need, the book you need in order to understand the context, the content on NCLEX is the Sounders Review book. That book is the Bible. That's all you need in order to understand what the content is all about. If you read that book from inside out, there is no how you can fail NCLEX. Trust me, guys. Take it from somebody who has been there. Now, I know there are many people out there who want somebody to maybe chew the information and just give them the summary. It doesn't work like that. You have to sit down, you read, and then you answer those questions. So that was my first problem. I thought I knew the content, but really I didn't know the content. So what I want you to do is when you're studying, even if you know the topic very well, stay with for the topic. Stay go through it because it's going to refresh your mind. Then you will realize that, oh, I thought I really knew, I, I, I thought I knew this, but really I didn't. So if you're, if you're studying for the NCLEX exam and you're reading or you're going through all your content or you're reading your book or something, Please, if you think you know something, still go through it, glance through it, because you will be shocked at how much information you forget, thinking it's still in your brain or thinking it's still in your head. So that is one advice I'm going to give you guys. Don't make that mistake. And I'm telling you the truth, do not make that mistake. Because you will beat up yourself when you fail a question, knowing that you knew it and you still failed it. Trust me. You will beat up yourself. You'll be like, oh my God, these are the things, these are the things I know. These are the things that you know I see every day. How come I didn't make it or how come I didn't pass? And that is so and that is something that many people who have taken the NCLEX exam, that's what they'll tell you. The information is very familiar. Blood sugar, you will know about it. Hypertension, you've already heard about it. Um, hypothyroidism, you've already heard about it. Gout, you've already heard about it. Like it's out there so when you think you know something just go through it just refresh your mind that will help you to not make that mistake the second thing that i made a mistake on is and you will not hear many people say this when you're studying for an exam you have to know when you are tired listen you have to know when you are tired. You have to know your limit. There are many people who can study for two, three hours and not even blink an eye. They will not go through their phone. They will not check something. They will not raise their head up. They will not. But there are some people who can just study just for 30, 45 minutes and they have to, you know, fidget around and maybe drink water, maybe eat something. That is me. I cannot study for one hour straight. I can't. So when I went to take the exam the first time, I sat in that hall for how many hours? For almost um, an hour plus, an hour 30 minutes, and I did not take a break. That was like, that was a worst mistake I made. Because I know when I'm studying, I don't study for one hour straight. I study for at least 30 to 45 minutes. Maybe I can get a candy. I can maybe punch my phone. I just need to do something before I go back and continue. So why that? Why this particular process is important because it's because when you're taking the exam, right? You have to know when your brain gets tired. If you don't know when your brain gets tired, then you're going to fumble. You're going to make mistakes because how do you know when your brain is tired? When you start failing questions that you already have, that you already know the answer to, that's when you know your brain is tired. So when you're studying, do this for me. When you are studying, you have to assess yourself. When you start to fail questions that you already have an answer or that you already know the answer to those questions, that is, that is your limit. So if you're studying, and when I mean studying, I mean like really concentrating and studying, not, of course, not studying in front of the TV. That's not what I mean. I mean studying, put yourself down, keep your phone, keep social media, keep everything aside, 
keep the kids aside and you study. When you are studying or maybe when you're doing questions and you realize that you're failing questions that you already know the answer, that, that is when your brain is tired and you have to learn to take a break. You have to learn to take a break. And that's why when you go through some of these um, online um, courses, they will tell you, like, if you, you do Kaplan, Kaplan will tell you, oh, shake your legs, do this exercise, raise your hand up, do that. You have to know when you when your brain is tired. You cannot just keep going like that. Then you're going to mess up massively. So when you're studying, know when. When you start to fail, I'm going to stress on it again. When you start to fail questions that you know the answer, that means you're tired. So when you're studying, mark when you start. Mark when you start. And when you start to answer your questions, you realize that in 30 to 45 minutes or maybe in an hour, you're feeling questions that you already have an answer or that you already know the answer. That means that is your limit. That means at that point you have to get up and you need to take a break. So when you go to take your NCLEX exam, on that day of the exam, you know that after 45 minutes, after 30 minutes, I need a break. Even if you're not getting up from your seat or going outside, you know that, okay, maybe I can just sit and not do any more questions and just, you know, stretch, lift up my hand, um, kick my legs, whatever you have to do in order to, you know, relieve some, um, some tension. You need to do that. That was a mistake I made the first time. The first time I took NCLEX, I did not take a break for an hour, 30 minutes or, more, or maybe more. I just kept on going. So you have to know when you're tired, know when your brain is tired. Like I tell many people that I talk to, I would prefer you take your time and you answer 70 to 75 questions correct than for you to watch through the 200 and something questions. Take your time. That is a tech point. Take your time. Do not rush. Do not rush, guys. Do not rush. Trust me. When I took the exam the first time, I came out from the hall. I couldn't tell anybody the questions I had because I was rushing. If you take your time and you read a question and somebody and you answer the question, you come out, somebody asks you what questions you had and you cannot remember, that means you were rushing. That means you are watching. Our memory have a way of storing that information. Do not read a question once. Do not read it twice. Read the question three times. And when you're reading the question, make sure you're jotting, you're jotting down the important points. Don't just rush through it. So take your time, guys. I'm not saying that take five hours for one question. No. Then that one, <laughs> we seriously have a problem. We seriously have a problem. No. When I mean take your time, read your questions. Do not glance, glance through your questions. Read your questions word for word before you answer the question. Please do that. And you will thank me later. Another problem that I had was there are so many materials. Like the first time I took the exam, there are so many materials out there. They have classes. You have instructors, you have people doing YouTube videos, you have people, I mean, all kinds of things. You have different books. Let me advise you something. Maximum three books. Maximum three references you should be using for your NCLEX exam. Maximum. If you get to the fourth one, you're going to confuse yourself. There are some books that will tell you that this in potassium level is um, this thing 3.5, some are saying 3.7, some are saying 3.8. Which one you want, clan? Maximum, guys, three books. Three resources, that's all you need. Me, I wanted to have Kaplan. I wanted to have um, this thing, the Sounders Review Book. I wanted to have the N N NSCD, something like that. The nursing something, something, something. I'm going to leave that word on the screen so you guys can check. Like, I was using all kinds of resources. And then, at the end of the day, you'd be like, okay, which one do you want to read? 
you don't know which one to read because you have all these books, you have all this material, then you don't know which one to start with. But when you have two, three materials or two, three resources that you can use, it makes it makes you focus. It makes your work much easier. You know, they say when you have too many alternatives, you get confused. And that's exactly what happens. When you have too many alternatives, you get confused. But when you have two or three to choose from, you can easily make that choice. So please do not overload yourself with too much information. Do not overload yourself with too much material that you don't need. All you need is three solid information. And if you want me to recommend you anything, one of those or two of those, you will. For your questions. The second one, you need that soundest review textbook. I think I have it somewhere. And let me tell you, most of all these instructors that have all these classes all over the place, they use the soundest. Let me look for that book and show you guys. This is the book I'm talking about. So if you can spare yourself that money and sit down and read this book, you will save. But if you cannot sit down and read this book, then please go to those instructors. They will help you too. I'm not discrediting anybody, but I'm telling you what they use. I've gone to some endless review classes. They use this. This is the material focus. This is the resource of focus. This book right here. So if you can sit down and read this book, you will save yourself a lot of headache. You will save yourself the driving, you save yourself the money and the time. But if you think you cannot sit down and read, then maybe you can invest in those instructors. And there are many of them out there. I don't know any, I can't give you any. I see some of them, some many students leave comments under my NCLEX videos, how this person helps them, that person helps them. Read this book. Read this book. I have a giveaway going on right now on this book. This book actually belongs to somebody. I haven't drawn the giveaway as yet. And if you want to enter the giveaway, you can still go ahead and enter the giveaway. I plan to do it by the end of this year, by the 31st of December. So that's when I'm going to draw the giveaway. So if you want to enter to win this book, you can still do that. All you need to do is go to the video. I'm going to leave the link under this video. Go to that video, leave a comment under the video about anything, anything about NCLEX and you must be subscribed to my channel in order to enter the giveaway. Those are the two conditions. Leave a comment under the video that I made on this book and be subscribed to my channel. It's like, it's very easy. I didn't tell you to go follow me on Twitter, go follow me on Instagram, or go follow me on TikTok. No. The second, or oh, is it the fifth? We lost count. Or the next mistake that I made. I didn't know when to study. I am a wife and one of two boys. And I'm sure many of you guys are in the same situation. I've spoken to some of you. You're in the same situation that I found myself in. So maybe I have three kids. And maybe toddlers or maybe still very infants. You have to know when to study. You need to sit down if you really want to pass this exam. You need to sit down with your spouse or anybody who is helping you with the child or with the kids. You need to sit down with them and be like, this is the help I need. If you can watch the kids from this amount of time or how whatever length of time you need then please do that have that discussion with that help that you have or have the discussion with your spouse if you can put a maximum of eight hours every day between two months and three months you will be done so those of you who have kids or who have too many responsibilities you have to come a time where you be like okay i need this help and i need it now what can you do? What can you offer? Whatever way you can help me, I will take it. But if you're still in that position where you don't have anybody to help you, maybe your spouse is the only one bringing the money in and you guys need to pay your bills, that is understandable. Then you have to make time for yourself. Now, I spoke to um, a medical doctor. She was in the same condition, just like us. 
with kids, nobody to help. Then she also had to work. What she used to do is by seven o'clock, she puts the baby to bed. She used to work in the morning, she worked for three store. From whatever time to five o'clock, she gets back home. Feeds the baby, by seven o'clock, she puts the baby to bed. She sleeps with the baby at that time, from seven o'clock to nine o'clock. She takes two hours. She gets up at 9 p.m. From 9 p.m. to about 3 a.m. How many hours is that? Nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. At six hours from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. she's studying so you need to sit down look at your time when can you sit down and study without distraction you cannot let's see let me not don't lie to yourself you cannot study with kids it's not possible I did it I did it my kids will be playing and body and clicks book big lies stop fooling yourself just keep that book one time and focus on those kids if it's endless you want to do look for time without those kids around you and study. So if you're one of those who have to get up in the middle of the night, do it. The sacrifice you make right now is going to heal fruits tomorrow. One of my mommies used to tell me, she said, I just, life, not the wrong. Fashion does not go out of fashion. Whatever goes out of fashion this time will come back the next year. So if you miss it this time, you'll get it next year. If you cannot afford it now, you afford it tomorrow. What you need to do is to sacrifice. Take it from me, guys. It was a struggle. Me and two kids. And I guess what? I had to break hair. If I tell you guys my story, you'll cry. You'll be like, ah, I never go through anything yet. I struggled like you. My husband was in school in Chicago. So it was just me and the kids. So you need to find time. That's what I'm saying. Two weeks, when you finally register the exam, two weeks to the exam, that's when you need all the concentration. Those are four mistakes I made. I didn't know the content. Time, I was rushing through my questions. I didn't allocate time to sit down and study. I didn't know when my brain was tired. Those four things, those are the mistakes I made. Nursing is a fulfilling job. I remember when I was in nursing school I we went to the clinical area for one of our clinical vacations and um, I was assigned to this um, to this lady. The information that I heard from the other nurse was that she doesn't talk. She just lay in bed, nothing. You do we have to do everything for her. So when I went to you know to my assessment, I realized that her mouth she needed over her chain. I cleaned her mouth as if she was my mom, as if she was my grandma or something. Do you know this woman said thank you? That was somebody that the nurse said doesn't speak. That made my day. I love nursing. That little minute that you have with your patient. Or oh, maybe you guys don't even have time. When do you even have the time to? When you are going to get your patient from Theo to take them to the OR, you have that time to talk to them and make them feel good before their surgery. Before they put that patient to sleep, do you know what I do? I always hold their hand and I whisper in their ear. We are going to take good care of you. Some of them will squeeze your hands so tight. That means a lot. Do you know what it means to go under general anesthesia? You might not get up. So even if they don't have anybody, you are that person that they have. So please guys, do not make these mistakes. And there are many others. So guys, that's it about this video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what other videos you you want me to do or you want me to make for you. So I just want to encourage you, if you're preparing for your exam, now is the time. Don't say next year, start now. And I wish you guys all the best of luck in your exam. When you pass, please let us know. We love to hear good news. We want to know how we're able to help you in any way. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Do not forget to subscribe. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you in my next video. Remember that you're unique, you're original. There's no counterfeit of you. That's why you need to pass that exam because your spot is waiting for you in the hospital. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye guys.